Hello and welcome to this my first vlog on sailboat maintenance. Today we're going to be looking at fuel gauges, how they operate and we'll take the opportunity to go to my boat and see the components as they are installed and do some fault finding on the system that's not working on my boat currently and hopefully facilitate a repair. Okay let's talk a little bit about the types of gauges we can get for our fuel tanks. There are basically two types of gauges, a mechanical gauge and an electrical gauge. So a mechanical gauge may be as simple as a stick, which you put into the tank and dip to see how much fuel is contained within the tank. Simple. The next, slightly more complicated mechanical gauge is a gauge with a float switch which um, mechanically sends a signal to a gauge on the outside of the tank. So it might look something like this. So outside of the tank, here's your tank with some fuel in. Um, a float on an arm which comes out to the gauge which sits on the outside of the tank. As the float moves up with fuel going into the tank, uh, the indicator through a geared system changes the uh, pointer on the gauge. So again, a nice simple solution. Great for tanks where you can see the fuel tank, but for many of us and on our boats, these gauges, uh, these tanks are deep in the bowels of the boat and you can't see them, indeed you might not see the fuel tank from one month to the next. So, most boats nowadays have an electrical fuel gauge. So how do electrical fuel gauges work? Well, it's relatively simple. They consist of two components, a sender unit and a gauge. Okay, um, but let's start with the uh, the input to the system I guess uh, which is your battery typically giving you 12 volts uh, DC um, some boats of course operate on a 24 volt system but majority of boats are operating on 12 volts uh, in the circuit there's normally a switch of some kind um, this might be your instrument uh, circuit breaker, it could be your uh, ignition switch, but some kind of switch in the circuit, um, and if it's a purely a switch, uh, probably a fuse uh, in that circuit too. Anyway, let's uh, keep this relatively simple. You've got a feed of 12 volts switched and fused in some way, uh, which will then go to your gauge itself and for simplicity I'm just going to draw it thus um, and uh, down through a resistor, a variable resistor which is the sender unit on your fuel tank and that goes to neutral, your zero volts okay so um, when the switch is closed power flows through this circuit and the amount of current uh, going through the circuit is in controlled via the, uh, the sender unit, the variable resistor that is uh, the sender unit. So a really simple circuit, okay? Not much to go wrong there, few places where you can have connection problems. Um, and, uh, and and the like for things to go wrong, but really quite a simple circuit. Um, I will just add there are some, um, in fact most fuel gauges, will, uh, will also have a lamp within them, I'll draw a little lamp diagram, and, uh, and that may be controlled by a separate switch, um, by a separate switch. Okay, so this is the lamp that illuminates the gauge at night. Um, sometimes that switch doesn't exist, 
uh, and is is directly um, fed from the uh, from the 12 volts when the main switch is closed. Uh, modern gauges doesn't matter quite so much because these ten lamp lamps tend to be LEDs and have less of a current draw. Um, on older boats, um, these will be a little 12 volt pygmy lamp, uh, which has a reasonable current draw um, and, and is thus important that when you're not using it to uh, limit the uh, load on your battery banks to uh, have it switched. So there we go, this really simple circuit, remembering the basics here is just basically um, current flowing from the batteries through the switch, through the gauge, um, through the uh, sender unit, uh, and the sender unit is uh, um, a variable resistor which controls um, the amount of current flowing in the circuit. So really simple, right up to the point when there are two standards. Okay, so there's two different standards used for fuel gauge circuits. That's the American version and the European version. Okay, and they're both, um, in, but it's really important that we understand the difference um, because um, if you mix components from one system to the other, um, they won't work effectively or correctly. So what does the American standard look like? Well, um, it's variable, variable resistor um, has a uh, empty resistance of 240 ohms empty and a full resistance of 33 ohms. Okay, so uh, empty 240 going in, dropping, resistance dropping to 33 ohms at full. The European version works in the opposite to that. That being 0 ohms at empty and 180 ohms at full. So the net effect of that um, is uh, basically the gauge works in reverse if you have the wrong sender unit. Um, really important. So um, when we go to my boat, um, we're going to measure the uh, resistance of the uh, of the sender unit and have a look to see whether it's an American version or a European version, um, so that we'll understand that. And we'll talk about how that's done later. So that's the basics of a uh, fuel electric fuel gauge system. Uh, components being the gauge and the sender unit. Remembering that um, uh, there are two standards: this American and European standard, and that the uh, gauges and the sender unit have to be from the same standard. You cannot mix and match a gauge from the American standard with a European sender unit or vice versa because they won't work. Okay, so now we're on board. Uh, so uh, let's have a little look at the equipment. Firstly, we'll have a look at the gauge, um, which uh, on my boat here is stuck on full uh, due to a defect. Uh, and uh, then we'll have a look at the sender unit and start our fault finding. So here's my uh, gauge, and as you can see, it's uh, stuck on on full. In fact, we're on full. Um, and here's my uh, panel. It's fed my, in my case, the uh, circuit that is supplied is supplied from this instrument switch here, which is currently on. Um, now we'll have a look at the uh, embarrassment that is on board my boat as I open this panel. And uh, show you the uh, bird's nest that is the wiring. Over the next few uh, weeks, I uh, plan to tidy this wiring up. Uh, each one circuit at a time and actually I'm going to start with this the uh, circuit for the fuel gauge. Now let's just have a look at the back of the fuel gauge. Okay some wires out of the way. Here's the uh, back of the fuel gauge. 
and uh... okay so just going to uh, do some basic testing here to prove that I have power at the uh, at the gauge the way I'm going to do that is uh, with my multimeter uh, I'm going to switch it to DC volts and uh, simply put the meter straight across uh, the uh, live feed and the neutral return um, and demonstrate that I have voltage on, prove that I have voltage there. So here we go, straight across the, there we go, so I've got, um, oh, you can't see that, so uh, 12 point, sorry, 11.95 volts, so uh, as good as 12 volts. Um, the refrigerator is running at the minute and that will have pulled the voltage down a little bit. Um, but uh, really we're not proving um, exactly what the voltage that we have, we're just proving that we have power there and that's what uh, this, this is demonstrating. So here's the sender unit on my fuel tank um, and uh, as you can see two wire system coming from the uh, from the gauge um, as uh, as we already said and the, and the float uh, and the resistor a variable resistor is within the uh, in within the fuel tank so I'm actually going to remove this uh, just to uh, to test that uh, before they do that though I'm going to disconnect the two wires and uh, just put a meter across those to uh, con do a continuity test of these wires. I've actually shorted the other end together. So bring the meter on. Putting it onto resistance, I'm not sure whether you can see that. Again, just proving that the circuit uh, meter is working okay, there we go. And then I'm just going to um, connect onto each of these. Thus, and uh, and prove that there's a direct short, and that just proves that the cabling is okay. So all things are pointing towards there being a fault with the gauge at the moment. Uh, but I am just going to, uh, for completeness, just test this uh, float switch and remove it and check it. Okay, I'm just uh, going to take some measurements of the uh, of the sender unit now. Um, so I'm across the uh, sender unit connections here, uh, and the float is dropped to the bottom, and I've got uh, two ohms. And uh, if I move the uh, the float up to uh, to full, you can see I'm getting 160, 180 ohms. So uh, that indicates that uh, the sender unit is working okay. And I'm just going to put it back in. Um, the connections are a little bit uh, got a bit of verdigris on it, uh, and I'm going to clean those up before uh, before I reinstall it. So all things being equal, um, the uh, sender unit looks to be okay. The wiring uh, to the sender unit looks to be okay, and I've got power um, at the uh, at the gauge. So everything looked to be the gauge. So I've now removed the gauge, uh, and uh, indeed. Uh, I don't know whether you can see this on camera, but it is cracked, and uh, I guess uh, there's probably a defect with inside the gauge. So this is uh, um, scrap, broken, uh, and I'm going to replace that now. Uh, and at the same time, I'm going to tidy the wiring up. Okay, so I just wanted to show the uh, new gauge installed. Here it is. And uh, it's on this circuit breaker here, as I was talking before, instruments. And as I switch it on, you can see the gauge uh, comes up to just over three quarters full, which is uh, about what was in the tank. Uh, you can also see that uh, here the uh, instrument light is turned on, and you should be able to see on the, the uh, um, gauge is lit. And uh, to turn it off, the, uh, we turn the instrument lights off, as, uh, as is the case. Uh, so all looks good here. I'll just show you inside the panel and the uh, wiring that uh, that I've done to tidy that up as well. So as you can see, I've now installed the new gauge, which is here, and uh, I've also installed a new terminal bar here. Um, my intention is to bring all the cabling up to this terminal bar uh, in the way of tidying this uh, bird's nest up. So bring it up to the terminal bar. I then take it away from the terminal bar and bring it down here onto the uh, onto the panel. So basically, the, all the cables will come together from this terminal bar in one loom down onto the uh, onto the the, the uh, back of the uh, panel. So it's a start. I've made a start on tidying up this bird's nest. That is, 
and uh, we now have a working gauge which is uh, excellent.